profit recently, but it's only really been in their Drow Ranger strategies. So I don't know if we're going to be seeing that here. Like we talked about, the Tidehunter is, of course, available. So that's a pretty decent way to, to get the Lifestealer around. And old boys, we've got, what, four potential supports now as they end up going in for the Enchanter. So I think it's Shadow Shaman Enchanter support, offlane Earthshaker, uh, one roll, uh, I guess, one or two Lashrac, and then one or two Bristleback? I think you have to put the Lash mid. He does well again. His matchup is good yeah. against Shadow Fiend with a Lightning Storm. You have Bristleback bot. Because then you start to look at, you know, the Shadow Shaman. What, what's his plan? Zeus for ROTK? Interesting. It, it's they could go safe lane Zeus against that, that uh, Earthshaker offlane, actually. Yeah, potentially. I like the Zeus quite a bit against the Bristleback. I mean, he's tanky, but Zeus does percent base damage, so helps to deal with him there. And the Enchantress as well can be a, a little bit of a nuisance, but if, when you've got all the nuke power from the Zeus. And we talked about the power of, of Ice Vortex, and Ice Vortex on top of all of Zeus's nukes lightning is, bolt. is very, very scary if you're, if you're old boys here. Especially since they've got, like... They kind of have a mech carrier in the Bristleback, but that's about it. And everybody else is quite squishy. So if they fall behind a little bit in the early game, I think they're just going to get, yeah, just going to get electrocuted by, by the Zeus. Do you think they will run aggro trial lane, knowing that the Enchantress is going to be, you know, off off the lane? It's going to be a three versus two, and then you sort um, of crush your lane for the first couple of minutes at least. I don't know. ROTK is willing to play anything off lane in a three v one scenario. I mean, for crying out loud, he played off lane Pugna, True. the other day. So I feel like it could just be your straight up. Offlane Zeus, but you're right. The Enchantress is always in the back of your mind when it comes to these potential aggressive tri lanes and the the chance that the Enchantress could pick up a couple of good creeps and run over and just wipe out your tri lane uh, right at the start. But we'll see. Looks like we are going to have a bit of a jungle invasion to start things out here. All boys going to try and defend their jungle as Ehom come over with uh, observers and sentries aplenty just to try and get some blocks off and probably keep an eye on the Enchantress at the very least. Do we saw this ward. Uh, be very popular in the past just for spotting out enchanters, but well, I'm going to place it a little bit further east, block out the pull through camp, and still get some pretty good vision of potential approaches. So I don't think there's any commitment just yet in terms of lanes from Ehom, but they're going to have a little bit of posturing as both teams just keep an eye on one another at the moment. And then they stay in the jungle for the next 10 minutes, just watching each other yeah. across the plains. No laning phase in the needed at all. So YYF on this Bristleback. Joe's going to be playing the mid last track with the null Talisman. While DD will be offlane Earthshaker and then the two supports 820 Shadow Shaman, Long DD Enchantress. What are they doing? Are they both blocking? Are they both getting ready for Joe's lane? They're both standing around and the Dire... Get both back <laughs> Wait, they picked up the top one, right? Okay, my, oh, map, yeah. my mini map just bugged out. Oh, it's, it's still there. <laughs> yeah, my minimap I'm, says I'm, there's a bounty yeah, rune here. I'm, I'm looking over at the Turkish screen, and he's, he's still on the minimap, got the little bounty rune. But no, it was, it was Lamb who went and grabbed it. Uh, and yeah, yeah old boys stacking is. both of those. They've got boots picked up first on their Shadow Shaman, so looks like they're going to try and go and grab a creep over in the Dire Jungle and then swing immediately over towards mid lane. They saw all of their camps getting blocked out and know that nothing's going to be spawning over there, so they're going to have to find an oh, alternative source of creeps here. He's not quite going to get caught, and he has Lanham just behind him. I just want to touch on middle lane. Chilling touch for CTY, allowing him to get you know one last hit, three denies. A great start for him up against Joe, who is one and zero. You know, it's it's one of these really difficult or impossible to handle things where Chilling Touch is given to the mid laner, especially Shadow Fiend early on, and he racks up souls auto almost automatically. There's no way you can really contest the first three last hits or so. Yeah, it's sort of the new age version of picking Venomancer and Shadow it's, Fiend and yeah. going and get the ward denies. To well, it's like the reverse of Bane and Feeble. You know, when level yeah. one he would move in and stop the, the opponent mid laner from getting farm. And does the opposite effect. Lanham with boots. Not going to get caught here. And he knows where the Enchanters and Shadow Shaman are. Both hunting in the dire jungle. Well, YYF. One versus one against ROTK. And ROTK is winning this yeah. lane. And I, I think he tried to get to the side shop to buy a stick. But ROTK just auto-attacked him enough that he reconsidered the decision. And actually backed down without going to grab the magic stick. So uh, YYF not all that happy with how this bottom lane is going. And yeah, as you said, the Zeus is actually... 
pretty much straight up winning this. 820 and long DD. They've got this centaur, gonna keep refreshing the duration as they smoke their way down towards bottom and that could be an ROTK first blood being spilled here pretty soon. Earthshaker does already have his level two up. Uh, so he's just making his way over to the two minute urn, camping that one out. It's an illusion. Long DD and 820 looking for the Shadow Fiends here, but the throwback onto the Centaur, onto both of them. Raze comes out, but the Centaur Stomp is still there. Long DD can end up going for the rune. And a few more auto attacks do force things back as Joe also comes rotating in. Lamb gets slowed down, stunned up as well. And looks like that's going to be your first blood. It's not RTK down in the bottom lane, but Long DD and 820 do still manage to get something done in these opening minutes of this game. Uh, and get off to a decent start. They needed to, though. Oh, like, yeah. They, they, they were them, desperate they're, for that kill. They're, they're level one for the past two but and a half it's round minutes. two. Oh, yeah. They fight RTK with a shackled arrow to him. YOF has no mana left. But this is still a Zeus. He's got decent movement speed. Nothing really, though, to get him out of that zone. Now, these two kills are good for old boys. But they are required for old boys to actually have, you know, any semblance of control in this game. Because their two supports have been roaming constantly. They've failed for two minutes to find any kind of movement. They've allowed the Rubik and AA both to get levels and experience and control the lane up top for this lifestealer who is racing ahead in terms of last hits. Shadowfiend, they've not really shut down at all. They tried, but Earthshaker at mid, they're looking again. Lanham walks into him and says, yeah, not today. Yeah, Lamb's doing a really good job of just sitting up on this cliff, scouting at any potential smokes coming in from this angle. Uh, and even if they end up looping all the way around from his jungle, he's ready to reveal it in. Yeah, he might die, but at the very least, he's making CTY feel very safe uh, and making sure that he can, he can pick up some decent farm here. <laughs> the DD is still also hovering around here, so lots of pressure being applied on mid, but that's going to mean absolute total free farm for ZYF over on top lane. And I feel like we haven't even really talked about the Lifestealer all that much this game, but he is very well positioned. He can run at the Lashrak, no problem. He can run at the Bristleback a, a little bit. Bristle, if he starts to get up some farm, can kind of smack him down, especially with Lifestealer's relatively low armor, but... And Long DD can't go for that untouchable build either. Yeah, no, you, you're definitely not going to get a, a ton of survivability there. That does, it's going to help against the Shadow Fiend, but yeah. that's pretty much it. Everything else is, is just magical damage. Like um, one value point, but you're not going to see the four yeah. that we've seen occasionally from, uh, from some pro players and obviously uh, Slash's way. Yeah, I, there would have been, if this is super old school enchantress, I think you mentioned the untouchable as a potential way to go and take Roshan. I mean, they don't have the most impressive Roshan lineup in the world, but they do have Goo, they do have potential Mass Serpent Wards, uh, and they do have an Enchantress to tank, so that's still something that they have up their sleeve. Centaur comes rotating over to its mid, but Lamb is still here. Raze is going to start getting dropped down by CTY. Manages to get the second one off, but the stun comes in as four heroes from Old Boys converge. Joe's hasted. Yeah, haste up on Joe as well, keeping eyes on Lamb. TP coming in. Centaur Stomp threatened, but not used just yet. It was long DD. Uh, looks like you're just going to end up settling for the one kill here. Rune RTK. Walks into Joe. Yeah, RTK stunned up now. He's got lightning in a short while, but not enough mana, actually. As the Zeus takes down the Shadow yeah, Shaman. He, he, he just bolted Shadow Shaman in the face. <laughs> level oh, 3 bolts, man. and he's only hitting level 6. Yeah, I don't think they expected just how high of a level this Zeus is. I feel like in... in uh, in poor 820's mind, he's like, oh yeah, offlane Zeus, five minutes in, he's probably like level three. I can, I can tank that, but <laughs> ROTK is actually almost level six here and uh, doing very, very well for himself. I mean, he's only one CS behind the solo mid Lesh right now, so things definitely looking good on that front. They're up about 1k net worth and about 1.2k, I would say, experience right now, so... Uh, old boys, as much as they've managed to get these ganks, it feels very similar to the previous game. They're moving, they're finding all of the kills, but they're just straight up getting out farmed as Ehome settle into their lanes and feel pretty comfortable with the way things are going. Yeah, if you take a look at hero levels, I think it's quite indicative of where Ehome wants to go with this, and uh, uh, Nahas has talked about this quite a bit as well. Uh, with net worths, you often see, you know, when a team's doing well or when a team's winning quite handily, they've got four of their heroes in the top five or six of net worth and all in sort of one big block because of all the, the shared gold and the spread. And right here, their hero levels are in a one big block in the middle. Four of their heroes are six, six, five, and four. Earthshaker on the Radiant, lagging behind quite a bit, and you sort of have to compare him to RTK, right? Because there's offlaner yeah. against offlaner. But speaking of, Zeus gets caught, and YWF thanks him for the little bit of gold lining his pockets. Yeah, I think 820 had... 820 had an invisor in there, uh, so pretty easy just to walk up and, and find that kill. So, yeah, getting things done. Has his level 3 now. How's Long GD doing? 
They're level four on the Enchantress, so I mean, not obviously not on pace with just an AFK farming Enchantress, but they set up three kills thus far, so I think has made pretty good use of the time. Uh, and what kind of builds are we seeing just yet? No real commitment from anyone on eHome. Oh, it looks like DD might be in some trouble. Does manage to just TP out, though. No Rubik in the area, and that Cold Feet is not going to coalesce nearly fast enough. He does TP back to the Fountain, though, not back to his Tier 1, yeah. which, you know, means... These guys up top can push through to the tier one. Maybe DD always oh, he's thinking about okay, I can go mid, I can maybe try and set up a kill here with Joe, look for the Shadow Fiend, but he knows. Yeah, if he leaves top lane, lane, it's gonna get pushed in pretty hard. Smoke down a bot though. Shadow Shaman and Enchantress looking for the wraparound under RTK if he gets a little too far forward, but that's a little plumber man. Sitting pretty far uh, back. Joe goes charging in mid lane. Can they get this lift? He's running away in the fissure. Uh, DD actually ended up realizing that nobody was continuing to push top and rotates over to mid to help out his distract. Bottom lane, RTK does not end up being caught as he just backs up towards the tower. So two attempted smoke ganks there uh, from either side, but neither of them going to end up being all that successful. That decision making for DD, great there. Sort of hesitated, yeah. mid, top, mid, top, where do I go? He goes towards the middle lane, because you're always going to get the more impact defending your mid laner than you're up top and, you know, maybe stopping, what, 300 damage onto that tier one. It's going to fall regardless. Yeah. I, I might have, like, the Lush may have escaped anyway, since he, he saw the smoke and just immediately bolted to the right, but Fisher definitely helping out uh, a little bit. As Ehom, well, they're just going to go back up and kind of finish off what they started on this tier one, though... There is a big rotation out of the Shrak to, to come and hang out this. I think that's the one thing that's kind of struck me a little bit from old boys in their play, is that they're extremely unwilling to ever give away a tower. Like we saw YWF on the Beastmaster last game rotating around uh, and sort of holding, a, holding down the offlane. And this time around, it's the exact same story. It's your mid laner uh, making a pretty big trek over just to try and hold on to the tier one tower for a little bit longer. I think part of it is that Joe doesn't have any points in Edict, so when they come push top, he can't threaten mid and just find a, a nice easy one for one, but yeah, they, they are moving around a lot in general, and I think that's start, so sort of where we start to see the, the farm discrepancy open up a little bit. ROTK and bot lane, yeah, they got the Hex of the Shackle and YWF with one point in Goo, should be able to find this kill, but the turnaround, Thundergold's Wrath is popped. Looks like Yang is trying to slow down YWF, but that's a tanky-ass Bristleback. Earthshaker, lag. Kala, no Fisher. Okay, no life steal is all good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So TP from the life stealer, he ends up wasting a little bit of time as well. There, the bristleback is doing really nicely. Struggled against the the Zeus somewhat at the very start of the laning phase, but he's holding his own with the SF farm wise. So that's looking good. And old boys come running in mid. Fisher, Lamb. I don't know which side he's on at the moment because it hasn't shown up for me yet. Uh, but he's going to get the lift, throws it back, Ice Blast comes in, RODK also arriving, Thunder God's Wrath along with some bolts. And they do manage to bring down two, it's Joe up on the high ground, just TPing his way back to the fountain, but does end up being a two for one exchange. Spells were cast and people died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting the messages pop up now. But CTY, how are we looking on the Shadow Fiend? Going into the mech, is, uh, there's more stuff on the courier. Yeah, he's got the pretty much done. So, Treads, Bottle, and 900 gold away from that mech isn't too bad. 10 minutes into this game for the Shadow Fiend. Lifestealer has his armlet done in about 400, 500, while AA has been given top lane. Pushing in alone, yeah. he's hit level 6, and I, I, I don't know. I, I used to call Midas, Aghanims, things like this on an AA that's in this position at sort of 10 minutes in. But this is DDC. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, Tranquil's Urn and like a Ghost Scepter or something. Yeah. I think a Force Staff is really good this game as well. If somebody gets... You can just Force Staff them away. If there's a Fissure, you can get the Force Staff over the top. Um, what else? There's obviously some incentive for Glimmer Cape. We've seen Ancient Apparitions also picking up... Um, the occasional medallion, though I don't know if there's much incentive for medallion this game. We're going to jump in on CTY top lane, three-man gank coming in. Chainstun as well, they do manage to connect the splitter, but CTY turns around and starts throwing back raises in the opposite direction. Joe trying to tank through with the stick charges, but he's going to end up being brought down as I think DDC nails him with the ice blast as well in the midst of all that. But Fisher lands, couple more auto attacks coming in, the impetus shots. Raining down onto DDC, but he's still alive, and the turnaround comes in from RTK. They bring down one. YWF also up here, but gets slowed down a little bit by the Vortex. The Fisher finally shows up, uh, I think, probably 20 seconds after it was cast, and 
10 seconds after Ooh. Earthshaker died. Rubik stole it as well. That's oh. big. Okay, so there, there, yeah, there's the Rubik Fisher. I, I can see that now. Uh, but anyway, mid lane, 820 getting chased in a little bit by ZYF, but Rage is actually wearing out right this second, and you know, YYF is going to come in and force them back a little bit there. CTY does TP right into the middle of everything here, gets hexed right into a shackle, getting auto attack down. ROTK somehow just running into the midst of all of that and dying. And now it's up to the life to see what he can get done. That stolen Fisher flying through the ice blast looks like a little bit off the mark. Maybe not the I think expecting a retreat, but Rubik holds them in position and they end up losing him as well. So killing spree for YYF. We'll finally see where the ice blast was going. Uh, and it looks like old boys are going to be able to, to pick up this tier one tower. So they're now up. 10-5, to 5, they've got the top two spots Dyer's on net worth, uh, and they're gonna start swinging the experience and the gold both in their direction. Things, things looking good. Before that fight, I was gonna sort of point out that they're in a very similar situation uh, as they were last game, at this period of, uh, period of the game. You know, 12, 30 minutes in, Dyer's they're looking good. Net worth is kind of balanced. Maybe they're a little bit behind the lifesteal of the Shadow Fiend and they're on par with the Zeus. You know, there's sort of a, a five to 800 gap between the actual individual core heroes. But at that stage of the game, when they had momentum building up, they then had, you know, a few minor mistakes taking team fights where maybe they shouldn't have. In this game, they've taken tier one mid. They're looking now to pressure the side lane tier ones. And I think a lot of this comes down to Ehome's mistakes. TP in from CTY, the sort of Rambo from RTK into the middle of four heroes. These are kills you can't really give away when you are currently even with old boys in a lineup that maybe, you know, old boys want to start pushing into your tier threes sooner rather than later. Ehome, are you banking for late game? Because it may not Dyer's get to late game. Yeah, I'm Dyer's I'm not sure for for Ehome here. They they might have to, honestly. They're they do have a couple of items up now. Uh, we've got ZYF with his armlet online. I mean, the Shadow Fiend mech has, I think, only just recently come out. But I think the biggest issue that Ehome are running into is that old boys can just take every single fight. They're not really relying on any big cooldowns. You know, maybe the Master Wards, but that's more for the the push and the and the siege and you know after taking a fight. tier one after the fight than it is for uh, actually taking the. Uh, the fight to Ehome and... Whereas Ehome to defend yeah. a tower, they need Ice Blast, they need TPs on the Life Stealer and the Zeus. Thunder God's Wrath, you know, it's kind of additional to try and find kills, but they definitely need Shadow Fiend to be alive now. That would help. Who, who do they have to keep him alive? If they don't have a Fissure or anything to sort of displace old boys or break up the fight, Telekinesis is the only real guaranteed disable they have. Uh, Dyer's Dyer's comes running in here. The Shrakers found himself another haste rune. Gets the slow down. Ice Vortex is going to open up a little bit of space as the Zeus starts spamming out. Fisher, however, catches on to two. Split Earth brings down the Rubik as CTY loses 50% of his health just to two impetus shots. ZYF has TP down here. He's quelling blading his way into the tree line at the moment. Uh, lying in wait, hoping to set a little bit of a trap, but do they know what's going on here? Old boys do walk a little bit further forward. And Requiem's gonna go out, but it's not doing a whole lot of damage. Joe is gonna get hit by the Ice Blast, and ZYF popping up from the back lines. Does get a lot done. His rage is worn off, however, but they do still manage to bring down the Enchantress. A little bit of armor toggling going on as he tries to get in between the Bristleback auto attacks, but YYF with one last punch is gonna finish him off. It ends up being a three for one fight, so working out pretty nicely there for Ehome, and they might not be done just yet. The lift ends up going back over the Fisher, I think that was a bit of a misstep from Lamb. If he dragged him into the team, I think the Cold Feet probably would have procced in. Uh, they might have been able to finish him off. But it is a Bristleback with some wand charges available. Uh, and he is pretty tanky, so they might have lost one more at the very least in the process. But That's a decent fight for Ehome. Yeah, know? definitely. Sort of throwing it back at Old Boy's face, Requiem to start things off. And that was a nice play from the Life Stealer hiding away in those trees, waiting for the Ice Blast. So it's being launched and about to land on the Leshrac. And yeah, that's basically what he did. He ran towards the support in the back, which was 820, forced the walls to drop. And he couldn't hex or shackle. So that's already the Shadow Shaman's defensive and aggressive arsenal gone out the window because he's, he's already caught by the Life Stealer and he can't cast any spells on him. So good catch there. Then his Leshrac, again, wants to spam out lightning as often as he can, caught and died. Bristleback was uh, kind of the, the last man standing pretty much in terms of cause for old yeah. boys. Earthshaker, how close are we to the Blink Dagger? No Sol Ring, got Bottle Tranquils and 2,000 gold away. Yeah, so still a ways to go 
for Didi. Uh, and I mean, you, you bring up a good point about the fact that the Bristleback was still alive, but once, kind of, once the Fisher's been used, once the Shadow Shaman dies, the Bristleback needs the lockdown to be actually to actually be able to get in and deal the damage that he wants to in these fights. Otherwise, he's just going to get kited around a little bit. Open wounds, lift, ice vortex, uh, all make life pretty difficult for him. And so, as soon as those, as soon as his lockdown heroes die, uh, YYF becomes a, a lot less scary. He's getting more points up in the goo now. His chase strength is definitely building. And uh, what do we got going on top lane? I thought it might have been a smoke from OB, but no, they're just, they're just straight walking up here. Yeah, two ones. Just continuing to five men. They've got their BKB actually on the the Bristleback now. So the smoke is now going to be popped. And they're going to start swinging their way over towards mid. It's actually the old boys this time around who've this taken the unanswered towers. It's so yeah. obvious though. Because as E Home, you're looking at this thinking, okay, there were Everyone's three, four gone. heroes top. Naturally, they'd push up top lane into, into the tier one. If not, where are they? Where, like, where do you back up from, from, from that situation they were in? Like, what, what are the escape routes? Either you go through the jungle and farm jungle or try and find a pick off, you go through the river, or you go back into your own jungle. So basically, anything in this situation here, Ehome say, right, back up, hide behind towers. <laughs> There's no reason to be in this area. Yeah, it was definitely, a, I think, a somewhat obvious smoke from, from old boys, but they, they tried for it. We got a four staff as the first item, interestingly, from the Lashrak. That's not something that I've, I can say I've necessarily seen, but it is definitely very good against the lifestealer, sort of your quintessential yeah, okay. lifestealer counter, so I think that's sort of what he's yeah. aiming for a little bit. You don't want to go Ghost Scepter against Zeus, AA, Shadow Fiend, things like that. So definitely not. Def definitely, definitely not. Ice Vortex, no, 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 no. But all boys pop down some ass open rewards, look to pick themselves up the final tier one tower over on the dire side here. And I think that's going to actually build them up to a relatively hefty lead, about 2k net worth. Uh, though E Home continuing to split up a little bit more and make better use of the map overall, keep things even, and they do actually drag experience down to slightly in their favor. And that's a little bit scary for old boys because if this game turns, that tier one tower gold is still waiting for E Home at some stage. And that's where we could start to see another landslide back in the opposite uh, direction. So, old boys definitely have to try and keep the pressure up. They didn't really get any deep wards down over on the, the Ehome side of the map, but I think some of that is just due to the fact that Ehome have RTK on this Zeus, and he can afford to throw out a couple of casual lightning bolts here and there and, and just try and find the odd ward. So, they do have to be a little bit more cautious with their ward placements than they, they would otherwise. Yeah, 200 gold for Blink on this Earthshaker. He has been spotted out by a dire observer ward, and you, you kind of see that e Home they want to really put a lot of pressure on Roshan and enemy jungle. Watch where the Enchantress is coming from, see where the Bristleback is farming, and you know, you, you try and draw them across the map, because now you're farming your own, you're spread thin. This is the thinnest you can really have your heroes. One top, one jungle, one mid, and DDC, okay, he's hugging CTY a little bit, but you have got one person in every section of the map. Yeah. While old boys, they're roaming around as sort of packs of two. Yeah, at the moment they are a little bit more split up, but I, I think you're right, Ehom are probably making slightly better use of the map overall. 820 going to grab some from top lane, and well, we, we were focused on the Earthshaker Blink Dagger, but the Shadow Shaman's actually been able to put together some decent farm of his own, and he's got a Blink Dagger now picked up as well, and that could be a very big deal, especially against this life steal. You get a Blink Hex before he manages to get the Rage off, and it all of a sudden becomes very, very easy to focus him down. So 820 definitely oh. looking to hide this as long as he possibly DDC can. DC's gonna TP away. The Dark Troll traps too early. Yeah. It's the exact same story kind of as, as Night Stalker, right? The, as soon as the one disable gets used, just immediately spam the TP yeah. button and, uh, and away you go. But all boys find themselves grouped up somewhat on bottom lane, E Home. I think realizing what's going on there, a couple of defensive things come out. They're going to, I think, allocate a few heroes towards top and then start moving everybody else perhaps down towards bottom lane. They've got tier one towers that they can try and threaten and trade for, but I don't think they're all that keen in giving up a, a tier two or just a tier one at this stage. So we'll see what they end up doing. The mass serpent wards do get dropped down and. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. 
Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. What's the plural of octopus? Is it is it octopi? It isn't, is it? Technically, it should be octopuses, but if you want to use the correct term, it's anyway. octopodes. That's strange. TTY gets to jump top lane. DD making good use of this blink dagger as this 820 comes jumping in. CTY thought that he was safe, but down he goes. Those, those double blink daggers get unveiled, and uh, they do find that kill. They get the deny on the tier 1 tower, and they even get the last hit. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. You want to be sort of half an item, one item ahead of the Bristle Bank to actually make that kind of impact. Because if you're in a fight and you're facing... соперник нападет и под вышкой aid for enchantress her biggest problem in through but the bristleback just Bottom tower is under attack. Throw it over into the pit, but this Roshan's taking. had fallen without contest
then retreating without losing any casualties. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. But Long DD throws the Glimmer Cape. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. The Shadow Fiend because I thought he. Creo que ni necesidad de poner el life las tenía. They oh the jump DD they've been. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. On the front foot, and we're going to be winning. And we're Dyer's middle tower has been denied. Didi. Radiance top tower is under attack. Another four staff here, so there.
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Spot long DD, but they do need. Okay, there's still 35 seconds dead. Over here towards the secret chopper. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Finding that perfect opportunity. His bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower has fallen. No. Return to the earth. There is now a Scotty. The rest of the team, time to bail and drop the serpent wards. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Tower as well in the the midst of
Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Worth based on the farm, but. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Long DD and C Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Come get here. Shadows are under attack. Radiance Middle Tower. pushing out to bot. So let's check his dead for a minute. Yeah, he bottom tower is under attack. Where are you going? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, for this, I gave up immortality. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, because we can. I got the AC delivered. Haste. Does have the Yules, but 20 with another blink. Perhaps, yeah. but that has
E-Home have all performed. Charging in any way. pushing it isn't all that dangerous radiant bottom barracks are under attack radiant bottom barracks has fallen radiant bottom barracks